Hi, I'm Paul Girada from Catalyst Resources, and I want to spend some time with you today talking about visualization principles for use in healthcare and life sciences software. Catalyst works with companies across the globe designing user experiences for complex software applications, and we have a particular practice in healthcare and life science, and I think you'll find these principles very valuable. So let's go ahead and get started. First principle is relate to the real world. In healthcare and life science, you got a lot of stuff going on. It could be humans, it could be, it could be animals, it could be instruments, it could be protocols, it could be drug discovery. It's hard to tell what the software may be uh, responsible for or involved with. Now, let me give you an example. If you look at the software on the left, you really don't know what it's about. The reality of it is this is one of the most significant instruments that are used across the globe uh, to test and stain cancer tissue samples or tissue samples to identify cancer. Um, and if you look at the software, you really have no idea what, what it is. And, and somebody comes up to it, they really have no expertise to bring to bear on it. Now, when we redesigned it, we took a different approach. We had the software look very similar to the instrument. So a person who knows the instrument very well, which are the only people that would be interacting with the software, when they stepped up to the software, they knew a lot about this software before they ever even touched it. Second principle is to use visualization to guide primary interaction. And what do I mean by that? What you're trying to do is you're trying to get people to focus in on what's the critical work that needs to be done. In the software that I was just describing that was controlling an instrument for staining tissue samples, there were really two big things that went on when the user was using the software. One was around the bottom were up to 30 different tissue samples that were on slides that had to be removed and added in as they were um, completed and started. And the other one was a carousel of about 35 different reagents that were used in various protocols to stain for different types of cancer. What we did is we designed it so that we would guide the user to focusing on these particular areas, even though this instrument had a huge amount of additional complexity to deal with. Another way to use visualization is to facilitate collaboration. And the beauty of this is that you can use the visualization as the central element and have multiple people looking at it and providing different pieces of information. So here what you see is on the left-hand side, you see a tissue sample. It's been stained. It was removed via biopsy, breast biopsy on the right-hand side, which you could see. Now, when a pathologist and a radiologist and an oncologist all look at this, they're all looking at different things and can contribute different information, even though the visualization is exactly the same. Another key thing to use do with visualization is to use relevant mental models. What I mean by mental models is very simply that you use something that the users will relate to that will bring forward previously perfected expertise. Now, let me give you another example of that. <clears throat> Say this is a person coming in the emergency room with a couple of injuries. You could have the software designed around a form that gets filled out. And you could have a number of people reading that form, and there's not a whole lot that you could understand about that patient. Not a lot that you really understand about them. You're reading a form. Another approach, which we used, in this electronic healthcare record, what we did is we had the mental model be the patient, be the person who is being evaluated with wounds. Now, if I have a team of people who are in the emergency room who are looking at this particular screen and relating it to the patient. They'll all realize that the injury on the left elbow is probably not very significant. It's superficial, but it's not necessarily life-threatening. Now, if I said the injury on the posterior right scapula was in fact a gunshot wound, everybody looking at this would probably know immediately what they needed to do. They would know the nature of the situation. They would know the nature of the timing. They would know risk factors. So mental models allow people to capitalize on previously perfected expertise and pull it forward to bring to bear immediately. Another way to use visualization is annotation and enhancement. Now, if you read the annotations on this uh, picture right here, you'll learn a lot more about that, about that little creature. 
By the same token, if you were to use this software, which is used to do DNA testing, various DNA tests using a, a range of different assays, the way we used annotation was to allow the user to annotate which assay related to which bar on the right hand side and to be able to draw some visual correlations as to what's going on. Again, it's not a whole lot, it's not complex, but it's a way of people being able to annotate things and add in their own um, information. And almost all visualizations, people often want to drill down to the single source of truth. They start at the top, they see a rich visualization, but what they need to get down to is what's at the bottom. What's at the bottom of this stack? Here's an example. The application that you're looking at right now is used for tracking drug trials across the globe. The largest view that you see with the map is used for helping people to select an area or select a, a particular phase as an example and, and get details about the drug trials in that area. Now, if you select the phase four trials of 295, the expectation is, is that you go to a list of 295 and you drill down to some detail about that. And the detail is what's the single source of truth and also what the user can see at that point in time. The seventh thing I want to share with you is the ideal of enabling inspection using visualization. Now, here's a piece of software that runs mass spectrometer. The mass spectrometer is about a $750,000 piece of equipment. This particular software and instrumentation was used to test all of the Olympic athletes in the 2012 Olympics. Now, in the upper band there, the upper graphic is um, some information about a particular steroid. In order to determine the validity of that and the, analyze the information, the other two charts are relevant. And by having the other two charts there, it allows people to inspect it and draw some conclusions about it. But without those other pieces of uh, visual information, it's hard for them to do that. So visualization help, enables people to conduct the kind of inspection that they need to deal with. The last one I want to talk about is including companion functionality and doing this via visualization. Now let me give you an example. <clears throat> when Toshiba was exploring how to redesign the UI that runs the main control software for their MRIs, CT scanners, and x-rays, what they did is they stepped back and said, okay, we know we'll have people dedicated to using those instruments. They'll be sitting there all day. But what kind of companion mobile functionality can we provide doctors and clinicians that have to access the information? And what they came up with is two things. One is, as you can see on the tablet, this is the actual imagery that people can take advantage of. So they're not running the instrument, they're just taking advantage of the instru instrumentation. The other one is uh, a cell phone where the person is just notified. But again, what, what's happened is they've used visualization as a way to present some additional companion functionality. So. Those are eight key principles for using visualization in healthcare. Obviously, you won't use all of those in the software you're working on. You'll design what you need and take advantage of the principles you need. And I think you'll find that you'll get excellent results from this. Thanks for listening. Talk later.